Now, I'm all for people obeying the rules. These are the laws of the land. Nobody would encourage anyone to break the law. Uh, but you cannot blame a fed up and disillusioned British public from starting to say, well, why are we supposed to obey these rules when the people who make them don't obey them or at least don't obey the spirit of them? Uh, let's talk to uh, the UKIP's interim leader at the Welsh Assembly. Uh, he's the member uh, for Mid and West Wales, uh, former Tory uh, MP, of course, Neil Hamilton. Uh, good afternoon, Neil. Hello, Kevin. Hi. Now, uh, I do think I'm correct in saying that uh, these uh, Welsh Senate members who got together for a booze up uh, in the Senate uh, weren't actually breaking the letter of the law, but certainly they were breaking the spirit of the law. And it was a really, really bad look four days after Drakeford banned the sale of alcohol in Welsh pubs. Was it not? Uh, do you condemn this uh, booze up uh, in these circumstances? Well, I don't condemn the booze up. What I, uh, what I do condemn is the hypocrisy of these people. Uh, it's typical of the political class who, with their sense of entitlement, that says, don't do as I do, do as I tell you. I voted against these regulations because I thought it was ludicrously disproportionate that uh, you could open a pub, but you couldn't sell alcohol in it. Um, and uh, these people all voted for this. And then four days later, uh, there they are, all in a day's work, they say, um, uh, which requires apparently bottles of wine um, uh, for hour after hour uh, in the evening, talking about um, something which everybody approves of anyway, which is to improve the facilities available for people with heart conditions. I can't see what uh, took eight hours to discuss over that. Um, or why um, you needed a drink uh, while you were discussing it. And while because of the amount they were drinking. But uh, so, I mean, that's really what it's all about, ultimately. You know, these are the people who make the laws and the law is an elastic concept, perhaps. They're saying that it's the licensee that bears the responsibility. In this case, the uh, company that runs the canteen facilities in the Welsh Parliament. Mm. They took the alcohol into the premises. They bought it themselves. They didn't buy it from the Senate. Mm. Therefore, that's all right then, isn't it? But the whole point of these regulations is to stop people gathering together mm. in such yes. circumstances. Yeah. Where you bought the alcohol doesn't seem to me to be of the slightest significance. No, it's not. There's it's absolutely people not. Who, who, who put the regulations together. It's, it's the lack of social distancing, etc., which was the risk that they were trying to guard against and these people flagrantly broke broke that element of the rule yeah and, and uh, a lot of people agree with you uh that they have doubts about the efficacy of lockdowns the efficacy of all the rules uh let's face it we've been going through them now for 10 months and we've got the highest death rate ever so people have the right to question whether or not any of the government's uh, measures are in any way stopping the spread of the virus. That's one thing. But uh, the government insists this is the way forward. Well, for better or worse, uh, in all the countries, we have the governments uh, that we have. And, uh, you know, people should uh, obey the law in a, in a modern, uh, sophisticated country. Uh, but you, you cannot expect people to continue to say, oh, it's very important that I obey the law, when we see uh, the booze up in the Welsh Senate or we see Dominic Cummings going for his uh, eye-testing drive or Tobias Elwood yeah. going to a party or Margaret Ferrier travelling the length of the uh, breadth of the country having tested positive for COVID. The, what I'm saying, Neil, is uh, I know that not every time we're talking about the letter of the law, but the, uh, the way the public see, see it, too many rule makers are becoming rule breakers. And if they're going to break the laws, why shouldn't we? Absolutely. It's stinking hypocrisy. And on a matter which, you know, the, all the governments of the United Kingdom, the UK government and Wales and Scotland and in Northern Ireland, they're all saying the same thing. And all the rules are the same wherever you are. And yet the people who are making these rules very often are the ones who are most censorious and hectoring, and yet they think that they don't have to obey them themselves. Look at the cases that we've seen in the last couple of weeks. Uh, a couple who went out for a walk uh, and bought from a takeaway a cup of coffee, fined 200 quid. Uh, a, a couple uh, uh, who visited their 94-year-old parents, uh, fined again by the police on the spot. Uh, and uh, yet these politicians think that the example they set is of no account whatsoever. The way you conduct yourself and the way your conduct is perceived 
which may be different from the reality, but the way your conduct is perceived is vitally important, I think, if you want people mm -hmm. to obey your message. So I think people are perfectly entitled to take the view, well, if what's all good for them is good for me. What's source for the goose is source for the gander. Well, they will do that, but of course, no one would encourage anyone to break the law or indeed break the rules. As I say, for better or for no. worse, this is what our elected governments think is best for us. Uh, and in a sophisticated modern country, you have to go along with what the government wants. Uh, but uh, its own practitioners do not seem to sometimes go along with it on a political basis. Uh, uh, I think the situation is interesting. Uh, Mark Drakeford uh, has immediately suspended the former Welsh Labour Minister Alan Davis for taking yeah. part in this uh, 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 booze up. I nearly called it something else then, beginning with P. Uh, uh, but the Tory leader, Paul Davis, and his chief whip, Darren Miller, who were also there, have merely apologised uh, but stated that they did nothing wrong. Do you think the Tories might have to up their game and suspend uh, Mr Davis and Mr Miller? Well, I think they're just compounding the error if they don't. After all, uh, that brings the whole Conservative Party now into question, not just the two individuals that we're dealing with here. I know all these people. I get on with them perfectly well in daily life. They're very congenial. Alan Davis is a very combative Labour member, uh, but he's very, very good company. I'd have no objection to spending an evening boozing with him <laughs> in normal circumstances. But the Tories, I think, really ought to practice what they preach. Uh, if they are the party of law and order, uh, and perception very often becomes reality in politics, then I think they would be well advised to do what uh, Labour has done with Alan Davis. And he, he accepts that... Uh, uh, it it's perfectly reasonable for Labour to have suspended him. So I think the Tories should do the same to Paul Davis and to Darren Miller. Uh, that's a, a fair point, uh, Neil. Uh, just a last question, uh, going off on a tangent. As uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton arrive at the Capitol building uh, to take part in the inauguration of uh, Democrat President Joe Biden, your feelings uh, as an important politician in Wales about uh, what the Biden presidency uh, might mean for the world, uh, well, for America, for the world, and uh, especially for Britain? Well, I think it's going to be disastrous for America and for the West, actually. They're already cozying up to Iran, signing up once again to the UN Climate Accords, which are going to cost the poorest in our society uh, huge amounts of money by boosting their electricity and gas prices. So many things that Trump did right, although... Uh, perhaps he wasn't the uh, uh, the most presentable of individuals uh, as the front man. But uh, I think Trump will actually go down in history as one of the more successful presidents, actually. Uh, and I expect that uh, this Democratic presidency under Biden, which is concentrating on the woke issues uh, the, as most important to, to begin with, uh, will just fizzle out. I, I expect that they'll lose control of the Senate and maybe the House in the midterm elections in two years time and his presidency will be stymied. I'll tell you what Neil, it's enough to drive you to drink isn't it? Uh, listen, thank you so much. <laughs> you don't have to drive me to drink, I'm there already. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thanks so much Neil. Neil Hamilton there, UKIP interim leader and assembly member in the Welsh Senate for Mid and West Wales. Taking your calls when we come back, I'm Kevin O'Sullivan, this is Talk Radio.